Welcome back guys. Got some great news. It's kind of an exciting day for us. Um, haven't really alluded to it in my recent videos, but we've been searching for a piece of property that we could kind of call our own. Uh, the house that I've been renovating that you've seen in my last couple of videos, that actually we sort of carved that off of a piece of property that my mother had. And that property is a very narrow, narrow strip of land. Um, her portion is like 50 acres and the portion we carved off of that old house is like two and a half. But it's a very narrow strip of land. It's right on the road and doesn't really have a lot of privacy. So we've been searching for a piece of property that we could call our own. My wife found a piece on a tax foreclosure property way, way back in the spring. We're talking like March and it is now the end of November. Uh, a couple of days will be the beginning of December. Bid on it. Ran the bid up, got in a bid more with a couple other people, and we ended up having to borrow a little bit of money to get the remainder of the money. We had a pretty good down payment, but it uh, finally, finally, after five months, came to fruition. So here I am out here now, um, at the very end of the very end of a road. There's a few acres here. It's very, very private, dense underbrush, and the criteria that we had, we wanted privacy. We wanted water on the property. There's a little small creek on the back side of the property, which I can't show you today because it's too thick to get back in there. And we wanted, uh, had to have power, water power and electric sewer, etc. And there is a trailer house on this property. On the other hand, the trailer house, this is how, what goes in those tax foreclosure auctions. The trailer house isn't actually mine. I got to file some papers called a writ of possession to get a hold of it, being that the previous owner, we don't know where he's at. Um, attorneys went and tried to find him. It's probably dead somewhere. We don't know. So the trailer house was owned by a family member. And so it's going to be kind of a cluster debacle. On the other hand, I can easily dislocate the trailer house and move it out of here real quickly if I can't get a hold of it. But if I get a hold of it, then that's a way to make a little extra money or move it and rent it out. So I'm all about trying to find a new place to make some money. On the other hand, somebody decided to deposit a couch and a love seat on my property the other day so this is the first day that i've been legally able to get in here and actually start cleaning this place up so i'll take you on a quick tour so here's the illustrious uh depositories that have been placed in my now possession i don't know why people like to dump stuff at the end of roads this was like an old vinyl imitation leather couch and it is now going to be a pain in my rear end to pick up and haul out of here so you can look around through here the old cabin down there is actually on a different piece of property, but uh, I'm still looking at records to figure out where I can go with that. So here it is. As you can see, it's a bramble of uh, like European blackberries over here. That There's supposed to be a pen somewhere in here for a property line. I've got to find it. This is all kind of like a Russian olive kind of deal. So in the spring and the summer, it's going to be, you know, real dense with foliage and make a really good privacy screen. For anybody coming down in here since moving out of wyoming we uh, it's been killing us at the lack of privacy that we've had around here uh, we're honestly a very reclusive family we don't really like people around much and we'd much rather kind of do our own little homestead deal so this property here if i can put a gate up out there will probably serve us quite well in total there's about seven and a half almost eight acres in here this is the garbage pile that I've got to clean up through here. Down off this way, through here, at the end of this little sloping hill, it's not very far, maybe 100 yards down there is actually the base of that little creek. And I can get you down there when I get things cleaned up. But all I'm thinking about is here we go again. Having to deal with that uh, house that my mom had and all the garbage and everything that was in it. I'm literally about to go through it all again with this mess. On the other hand, I can actually turn this property over for probably twice to almost two and a half times what I paid for it. So I'm going to call that a win. Out through here, you can kind of see the trees in the background up there. Um, kind of the tree line. That all, according to the aerial photographs, that all used to be cleared out through there. So they had a really nice big backyard in here at some point in some time. And this has all been able to grow back in. So hopefully we'll be able to get that all pushed back out again. 
and turn it into a nice uh, play area for my kids. So in the meantime, I may throw a couple of RV pads in here just to see if I can get it to pay for itself. Over here behind the house, there's a mimosa tree. There's a Rosa Sharon and several other ornamentals along with this Japanese maple that's sitting right over here to my right. The original owner of this property that I can do on the research dating back into the early mid 2000s was an elderly lady who had a lot of um, ornamental shrubs back off in here someplace. But since then, when she died, somewhere in the late uh, 2010s, uh, everything was sort of allowed to go to pot from that point on. So inside the trailer house, I uh, haven't really gotten into there yet, so I don't even know what awaits in there should I uh, actually be able to get a hold of the property through the writ of possession or judge's abandoned property deal. So, yeah, there's a rhododendron here and a little storage shed gonna have to break into that later on and figure out what uh what all may have been left behind trash wise that being said let's uh fire up a chainsaws and a weed whackers and get going on this okay day two um the other day it was a saturday i think today's tuesday next time i was able to get back out here i hauled three truckloads in old green of garbage out of this place uh, most of it was piled up against the side of the trailer house like i showed you a few minutes ago and uh old water heater lawnmower and a couple old mattresses floating around well i found more today but real quick let me show you what i'm working with here last year uh for about 12 years i've been running an fs or steel fs 110 weed eater i've hooked a brush blade to it and it's done real well got real hard to start last year and uh we took it apart and found out the cam was no longer a cam it was no longer an oval it was flat round so i ended up uh pulled the trigger and i bought one toyed with buying used versus new but for the money i just went ahead and bought new so what i'm using out here is actually it's a steel fs 131 it's the smallest of the professional brush cutters uh, you could use it as a weed whacker, you can use it as a brush cutter, and you can also use it for cutting small trees down. When the trees get too big, I got the old trusty 025 steel over here because nothing in this lot as of right now needs anything like a 440 Magnum big bore or 460 like we have at home. So real quickly here, the FS131 steel, uh, you can put this blade on here. This one is particularly for cutting trees. It looks like a big saw blade, but it's made by steel and for steel. So it's a 200-80 on part number. I can also run my trusty old string head on it. And this is the monster right here. What I've got on there right now, yep, you guessed it, the guard's gone because I've been in a real thick patch of briar bushes down there. Frankly, the guard was just getting tangled up. That's a triangular blade for uh, brush and uh, vines and things like that. So... What it's been doing, you got the handlebar set up. They've also got, this is your basic harness right here and it's got a um, big hook and a chunk of plastic to keep it from rubbing on you too bad. Face shield and all. What Steel's actually stepped up with is your carburetors. Uh, the choke assembly here, if you turn it, you gotta sort of push in to turn it full choke and then as soon as you hit the uh, gas, it'll snap right back to wherever it needs to be. So they've kind of come a long ways on that. Bought it last year and I've got, oh shucks, in the last two days, I've probably got eight straight hours on that thing. And uh, actually it does pretty well. Still runs on the steel mix fuel. But let's show you what it can do. So looking around the trailer house here, all this was weeds out through here the other day. It's all been cut down. I really have not used the chainsaw much of anything thus far now the bigger of the two limbs down here this guy here that's probably about two inches in diameter yeah i cut it with a chainsaw the other day all the rest of the stuff short of that big one in there was cut down with that brush trimmer everything out through here has been cut short of that great big one with the brush trimmer i'll show you what it's capable of on the briar bushes down here too Basically, the best tactic I've found for the briar bushes is to sort of get on top of them and start pushing down with them and then sort of turn it edgewise and sweep side to side. But like I said, you can see all this in here. It was all cut with that brush cutter. And when we started the other day, 
this was all out here to the edge of the road so it's looking better found the culvert yeah stepped in that the hard way so some of this through here was cut with that brush cutter and uh, the bigger stuff is a chainsaw but if it's like chewed off that you can see up in here that's all with the brush cutter all right through here see we're on the side of the trailer house on the uphill side all this was nasty with uh, briar bushes and brush and if you remember a few minutes ago in the video this was just like a little corridor through here that you could barely walk around to the tongue of the trailer house all this is what i cleaned out of here today i really needed to come through here with a bush hog and there's still a lot left to do in here but on one hand i'm glad i came through with just a brush cutter and was able to work all this by hand and i mean it looks like a bush hog has been through here mainly i'm glad i did it by hand because of this right here this guy loved his malts and jim beam there are more bottles out here but these are the ones that i've found so far and i was glad i didn't cut them with a bush hog because all that would have been in the ground and my kids would have been playing in here in probably a year or two years so but yeah all of this through here plus that lawn chair would have been wrapped up around the blade there's another one over there i mean there's another whiskey bottle laying over there this place is slammed full of garbage also we were able to do some cutting back off down in here a lot of it's still standing but a lot of this has already been cut at the bases all the way down there and just just out of my hand is the creek itself so and i was able to cut almost all the way to the edge of it the other day original lady that was living in here back i think she died back in 2015 2016 actually had hydrangeas in here so as i was cutting through i found what was left of the hydrangea bush we'll see if it comes back in the spring that'll be cool mimosa tree rhododendron tree over there there's another evergreen style uh foliage back in there and there's a ton of boxwood in here so sadly i might have to cut some of that down but it will create a really nice perimeter hedge as I was cutting in here, I found the mother load. This is garbage. I mean, the vines have been growing over top of all of these black bags through here. It's nothing but cans and just flat garbage. I mean, Budweiser, Coors, Fosters, PBRs, Ice House, whoever was here was not very descript or discriminate about their uh, alcohol or consumption. So. But as you can see, this is just a jungle. And uh, it's gonna take some time to cut it all back, but it will be a pretty little spot when it's done. So there you have it. We'll uh, kick out for today and see what tomorrow brings. <laughs>